Is it a kind of re religious level faith in this idea, would you say, or is that my overstating it? Uh, in a sense, and and a lot of them are highly religious and and resort to bi biblical liter literalism to support what they're saying. Um, it is undeniably cult-like. Ah, yes. From going to the ends of the earth. When they say yeah. someone's going to the ends of the earth, they're, they're literal. Well, it's just that everything is a conspiracy, right? <clears throat> everything is the evil Illuminati, uh, Freemason, Satanic, whatever you want to call it, agenda. And we're the super awesome rebels that know the truth, and we're going to expose the evil people, and we're going to, you know, uh, awaken the world. And I mean, they literally think that they're Neo in the Matrix. That's not an exaggeration. That's how they perceive themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, as being awoke, right? It's all this ridiculous red pill uh, terminology, and um, they have a they they th that is their entire identity. Their entire if you are a flat earther, it's your entire identity because all of the knowledge is wrong. Everything, all of the knowledge and everything that you that you interface with every single day is a lie and part of the whatever NASA whatever you want to call it agenda. So it's something that they're engaging with every day. It's their entire ideology, and so anyone who opposes that is attacking their ideology. So there's there's this cult-like fervor and it renders good faith conversation completely impossible, whether you're the grifter and you're protecting your grift or you're the mark of the grift and you've made it your ent entire identity. And so even understanding Newtonian physics and gravity and admitting that gravity is real would unravel your entire identity. So they react violently to it and can't even admit basic things like that down is towards the ground, right? Stuff that you, it, like my five-year-old son can understand this kind of stuff, you know, uh, but yeah. So so I'm thinking about, again, I care less about your beef with Lord Jamar, and I think more, again, about how people come to understand the world. And so, you know, you, you said something that was really interesting to me. It, the flat earth is just like the entry point in a way, right? I mean, it's, it's if I can convince someone that the earth is flat, then I can convince them that everything they understand about the world is wrong, that they can, that, that there are no sacred cows at, at the, at the epistemological level, that, that everything they were taught to believe is wrong. And then I can have them questioning everything, which puts me in a, a very interesting power position. Um, yeah. I mean, flat earth is the bottom of the barrel. I don't know if I would call it an entry point. I suppose it can be. Uh, to me, it's the end of the pipeline, right? You can get mm. in it from moon landing denial or or anti-vax or whatever. But I mean, if you go ah. all the way to the bottom of that pipeline, it's flat earth. Because flat earth is a denial of literally all of reality and all of science. Moon landing denial is very stupid, but it's not. it doesn't defy the laws of physics to right. suggest that we that we uh, didn't land on the moon. And there's it's almost- Distrust of the government. Yeah, it, it stems from distrust of the government and it's just generalized conspiratorial thought. Once you start digging into their talking points, it's totally unscientific. But just the singular concept of what if they faked a thing? That doesn't, it's not as, an, it, it's, it doesn't defy the laws of physics. So, but that's, that I would call that an entry point. And maybe uh, some people sense. enter in, in, in flat earth. But what you're saying is true in, the, in that if you believe in flat earth, you believe in every conspiracy. Every single conspiracy is within the flat earth panoply because all of science is fake. Every government on earth is evil and, and you know, perpetrating this uh, deception. And uh, it's just, it's insanity. It's complete insanity. I, I want to present two counters to you oh, oh, that I think maybe not counters because I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but two, two um, ideas that may be raised by people who don't agree with you so either somewhat or fully. The first one is um, science gets it wrong. I mean, I, I think about, you mentioned Newtonian physics. I, I think about Thomas Quinn and, and for those that don't know, you should read The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. It's, it's an incredibly important book across fields, whether it's history, whether it's history, history of ideas, whether it's science, different scientific disciplines, et cetera. But there are often paradigm shifts in our society. There's off, there's, there's, there are often moments where we think we know something until we realize that we don't. And going from Aristotelian to Newtonian conceptions of physics, I mean, there are radical shifts in how we understand the world to function. And even things that seem self-evident, we've come to realize may not be. Um, that's the first thing that someone may say, which sort of promotes the skepticism thing, right? It's like, yeah, Professor Dave may have it completely right based on what we know, 
But all truth is somewhat provisional, and we always will find better truths, greater truths. And then the second one, I want you to respond to both of them. The second one is the government can't be trusted. There's a particularly when I think about you and Lord Jamar's debate, and I say that because part of it was also the optics, right? There's this white guy coming in, uh, calling this black guy, telling this black guy he, basically he's an idiot, doesn't know anything about anything. And the racial politics of that aren't to me important at the level of what's true or not, but it might be important at the level of the audience making decisions about who to trust, given the fact that there's a long history of the government lying to people, the, the, the government being dishonest, the government lying about everything from foreign policy to uh, giving inaccurate information about the vaccine. You know, not saying that, not, not talking about the conspiracy theories, I'm saying, hey, there was a moment where we were told you couldn't transmit this 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 uh, this virus, and then the moment it turned out you could. Uh, Fauci wasn't always entirely accurate. Again, I happen to believe we had the we we gave the best information we had until we got better information. But that goes to the first point, right? Sometimes we get it wrong, and so why should we have this sort of unquestioning unquestioning faith in the government? Number one, uh, just because they might get it wrong, and number two, this state does not have the intellectual or moral authority to warrant. Uh, the kind of commitment and fidelity to their claims that 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 some that some of us seem to have. What would you say to those two things? Okay, so the paradigm shift talking point is just it's it's highly overused and misunderstood. And just because uh, I've never heard that as a talking point, that that's purely just something that I was thinking. No, I know, and I mean I deal with this. There's all the, there's like pseudo philosophical uh, content creators that make ridiculous content promoting electric universe and stuff like that, based mm. on this concept of paradigm shift. Or, you know, we need a new paradigm. Um, so paradigm shift does not relegate the old paradigm. It doesn't throw it in the right. New, the, obviously, the, the the classic example is the Newtonian paradigm to quantum mechanics. So Newtonian mechanics still works. Hmm. It works just fine, right? We use we use Newtonian mechanics to describe terrestrial motion today, always, and it works wonderfully. Uh, the only thing the paradigm shift did is that it relegated it to a particular right. We we figured out the Newtonian mechanics only works for things that are much larger that are larger than atoms and going nowhere near the speed of light which is everything around us <laughs> so newtonian mechanics works just fine newton's law of universal gravitation works just fine that's still what we use to uh calculate the trajectories of probes and send them through the solar system um so paradigm shift does not render an old paradigm obsolete it just relegates it to a particular sphere of experience where it remains relevant um so <clears throat> there's no right there, like we know things and that we will know things later that could qualify as another paradigm doesn't mean we don't know the things that we do now there may be qualifiers we may revise things or whatever but uh, the earth is a sphere that's a fact that's not going away and then going to your second point about the government it's totally fine to distrust governments particularly in the sphere of you know foreign policy and all the duplicitousness there um the government can't change the laws of physics there's no government uh we've known that the earth is a sphere for thousands of years prior to any existing governing body uh, uh coming about and there's nothing that any government can do to change the shape of a planet or change, make gravity not real, or make it real when it isn't real, or anything like that. It's just complete insanity. Um, and so, I mean, we can go, I mean, we we can talk about the other stuff you said, mentioned about vaccines and Fauci and stuff too. All of the distrust is in, incredibly overblown and magnified uh, with for conspiratorial and, uh, you know, propaganda-driven reasons. Um, but uh, it's okay to say, uh, to be skeptical of a statement or a pr individual study or something like that. It is not appropriate to be skeptical towards the entire body of scientific knowledge that has been gathered over hundreds or even thousands of years. That's preposterous. You know, I, I came into the university as a young graduate student at a moment where post-structuralism and post-modernism were being promoted <clears throat> as incredibly helpful ways of disrupting our understanding of knowledge and knowledge claims and truth claims. And one of the things we were always told is that science, capital S science, is something that has become, that has produced a certain kind of dogmatism that is not that different than religion, right? What do you say to people who say the same way that you're saying that people shouldn't be doubting science, not, not questioning scientific claims, obviously you support the scientific method, but effectively saying that you saying this is true and science can't be debunked in this way, a, a big picture, is no different than someone saying God said it, 
I believe that that settles it, that you're just as dogmatic in your faith towards science as they are to this other stuff. What do you say to those people? I say that is a talking point that charlatans use to try to elevate their pseudoscience up to the level of actual empirical science. It doesn't mean anything. Science is antithetical to dogma. Once something has been substantiated far, far, far beyond reasonable doubt, like the shape of the planet, it doesn't become dogma just because of how well empirically it is substantiated, right? If you want to alt offer some alternative to something that has been that has been shown to be that consistent beyond reasonable doubt, you need evidence. And something like flat Earth is not only without evidence, but also contradicts everything that we already know. So this whole science is dogma, capital S, whatever it is, it's bullshit. It's just something that charlatans and pseudoscience peddlers say to try to either elevate themselves up to real science or drag real science down to their level of confusion and uh, and propaganda. That's all it is. Um, that's an interesting response. I I have thoughts on that, but but for the purpose, I don't want to confuse the audience into thinking that I disagree with you. So I, I don't want to, as a social scientist, I think that there are ways that we come to investigate the world through positivism that we that we tend to fetishize scientific insight and scientific method in ways that deny or, or obscure at least some of the complexities of human experience and how humans come to know things. But I mean, somebody point, might do that. Somebody might do that. But generally speaking, that's not a broad societal problem. The broad societal problem is science denial. Somebody might, somebody out there might fetishize science, and and I would advise that they not do that. I would advise that they not, uh, you know, elevate science in that way and hmm. view it, uh, uh, in, you know, epistemologically in the appropriate lens. But th we're, we're, that's not even worth you wasting a lot of breath on. We have an incredibly rampant science denial uh, all over the world that may destroy the human race. That's the problem, not, you know, scientism. Or not, my, or, not the abstract philosophical sense. arguments about Yeah, and that's why I said I don't want to distract the conversation from that. Yeah. Um, because, but I, I wanted to register that because if I don't, then all my all my academic colleagues are gonna be like, "You just let them say that about science." 